So we are well into the January transfer window now and for the first time in a couple of seasons we've actually been able to make a couple of deals happen in January. Before we go into the fixtures since the last time we met, the takeover has happened. The uh, consortium who were planning on replacing me with a new manager did not win the bid, thankfully. So the consortium that came in didn't sack me. They did give me an increased transfer budget. I think they give me like an extra £8 million or something, which is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. But they are obviously not sugar daddy, so we're not going to be rolling in the cash. We've actually started paying back a bank loan at some point this month. Uh, £53 million was the original debt. 450 k a month will be going to service that, which uh, isn't great. But anyway, let's have a look at the fixtures. So it has been like pretty much two, two months or so since we last time met in game anyway because of course Qatar 2022 has been going on our first game back after that was Udinese at home back in Serie A action and we won 3-0 Adam Hlozek got himself a hat-trick are we about to see last season Adam Hlozek for the second half of this season I'm certainly hoping so we then went away from home against Fiorentina and won 2-0 Hlozek again on the score sheet and Lazaro in the 90th minute we then beat Cagliari 3-0 at home, but this was in the Italian Cup first round. Lazaro, Moise Keane and Giglione on the score sheet this time. We then had a home tie against Kiev, which we inexplicably drew 0-0. It was a hugely frustrating game. The team performed pretty well. And as you can see by the match stats, we definitely deserved the victory, but we just couldn't find a way through. And finally, it was the best result of the bunch of 2-1 away win against Roma. Moise Keane and Adam Hlozak on the score sheets this time. Massive result away from home. It was a very even game where a point probably would have been fair. And that sees the Serie R table looking like this. We currently sit in fifth, uh, 10 points behind Inter Milan, who sit top. So it's highly unlikely we're going to be challenging for the title this season. But top four is, of course, our aim, and we're one point outside of that behind Juventus and Atalanta. So let's get into the transfers and what has happened so far during the trans January transfer window. Of course, we're only halfway through it right now. So plenty more could happen. David... Carmo, one of our first choice centre backs, has went to join Shandong for £16 million. I spoke about this in the summer that I was interested in cashing in on David Carmo because I did have a purchase in mind. The purchase that I had in mind had already signed for a Premier League club, so he was out of the question. Thankfully, I found somebody else for around exactly the same price, pretty much. Um, but yeah, David Carmo, he was a fantastic servant for the club. We signed him from Braga for £6.5 million. Spent a season and a half here, did very, very well last season, not so well this season, and 16 million quid was nothing to sneeze at. Hero from the first season, Eldor Shemurodov, has went to join Norwich for £3.7 million. He was our, like, our fifth, sixth choice striker, he was never getting any game time, and I thought we might as well cash in on him. I have made an offer for another striker to replace him in the squad of a similar sort of level and young, so um, I was happy to see him go. And the only other player to leave during January is Milan Bedell. He's went for 135k to Huddersfield. He was on a big wage and he came off the books. Even though his contract was run out at the end of the season, is absolutely fine. Again, I've got a sign-in coming in who should really, really improve our first 11 in his position. So let's start with the only proper sign-in that we've made so far. Svetozar Markovic from Olympiakos. He had a £16 million minimum fee release clause and he is a big big upgrade on David Carmo. If we compare the two here, David Carmo, slightly better attacking, slightly better vision, pretty much identical aerially and mentally, but defending physical and speed, Svetozar Markovic has the advantage in all of them categories. As a centre-half, he is by far the better player. He's got a bit of potential to grow. He's already valued at £21 million after the signing. Uh, 60 grand a week does make him, I think, our most uh, highly paid player at the club. But to me, it's worth it. And I'm hoping we'll see big things between him and Anel forming a long-term partnership. And moving on to the potential transfer ins, Manuel Locatelli became available for £2.6 million. Now, his contract's run out at the end of the season. So I could have just approached a sign, but Chelsea were interested, PSG were interested, and... If Sassuolo were willing to accept 2.6. He's not the kind of sign you'll see me making very often at 25 years old. I like to sign them a bit younger with higher potential. But we are getting an Italian, as the finished article, replacing Milan Badella in the squad, in a automatically, automatically becoming our best defensive midfielder and probably best central midfielder if we ended up playing him there. But in my, in my mind, he's going to be playing deep line playmaker role in the defensive midfield. And I think he's a big upgrade on what we've got currently at the club. 
So his contract's been on the table for at least a week now. So I'm expecting, hopefully, before the second game of today's episode, he should be with the squad. The second approach I've made is Dion Drenet Bejlo from Ozilek. It's 4.9 million quid, basically to replace Eldor in the squad. Um, he's a youngster, 20 years old. He had Borussia Dortmund offering 4.9 million pounds from. I don't know what happened to their bid, but it's been withdrawn. So I'm hoping we'll be able to pick him up. No bother. I haven't actually scouted him yet. But even if he, even if it comes to me and he's like two and a half star, three and a half star, that's fine. Uh, Eldor was a two and a half star player and he did the job when we needed him to. He wasn't the striker I wanted. The striker I wanted was this man right here. 17 years old. Nikolai Shipilov from Krasnodar. A regen would have been our first proper regen to come in at the squad and really start to make his mark. He is going to be absolutely special and... Even if I don't get him this transfer window, I will be going for him in the summer because I genuinely think he might end up being one of the best strikers on the game. His physicals are so well-rounded for a 17-year-old. Mentally, that's where he's got to grow. Technically, he's good enough. He's probably better than Adam Hlozek technically right now at 17. So uh, keep an eye out on this lad. I certainly will be. So that's all the transfer business to talk about so far. But of course... Even with them other two deals going through, we'd still probably have around £9 million left with plenty in the wages as well. So, could be room for some more manoeuvring. I'm still looking for a right back. I mean, it is dry out there. There is not very many options if you're not willing to spend 50 £60 million. In terms of today's episode, though, boys, uh, Juventus and ESA Milan will be the sides. We've definitely turned things around compared to last time we met. We were re in a really, really rough space. Um, the Man City game was pretty much a fluke compared to the previous six or seven games. So we've turned it around since then. The break has done us good and Juventus is sitting in fourth and we are chasing fourth. So we're going to have to hopefully get a good result today. Unfortunately for us, Hlozak did pick up an injury in the previous game. So he is going to be missing for the next five or 10 days. So he will miss both games today. Um, thankfully, we've got Lazaro, Thiago Almada and Moise Keenfit, who will start up front. Tagseth, Alcaraz, uh, Melagioli, Casasia, that's Liberato. Barkovic, Enel, Giglione, Sport Yellow complete the side. Let's get into the game against Juventus and see what we can do. We did have some good results against them last season, I do believe. I think we beat them once. Did we get beat once or draw once? I can't quite remember. But um, they're not the side that they were last season either, sitting in fourth. So they're they having a rougher season than uh, they did last season. Let's get a kick off, see how we get on. We are at one. Oh, we've scored 20 seconds in. I didn't think it was a highlight. I changed my settings when I come into game, so there's always a highlight at the beginning of the game, even though there shouldn't be a highlight at the beginning of the game, unless it is a highlight. Alcaraz with a ball through, Lazaro with a goal. Right, I, I'm just basically letting you know that I usually ignore the first highlight because it's a result of me changing the match highlights and stuff. But we have our second highlight. Tag Seth with the corner. It's clear by UV. We're 1-0 up. I didn't even get the chance to celebrate. And we go again. And Medzevic in Alcaraz. The ball through would have been nice. Kessie punts it slot. Oh, sporty yellow. <sighs> Again, goalkeeper is another place I'm looking for. Believe you me, I'm looking. Thiago Almada with a strike. Pretty adventurous there, Almada. But yeah, our weakest spots in the team is still right back and goalkeeper. We've managed to strengthen amazingly in areas where we didn't need strengthening. Um, so I guess that's just the, the, way, the way it goes sometimes. You can't quite find some positions even though you're desperate. So the summer transfer window, if we do qualify for the Champions League again, I think we're going to have a much bigger transfer budget than we're used to. So I'm going to probably go big, goalkeeper and right back. Moise Keane to Thiago Almada, feeds it through to Liberato on this left-hand side. He whips it in. Lazaro's there. It's just hit him. He did not mean to do that. Oh, it's an Alexandro own goal. That's why. You could tell Lazaro knew absolutely nought about that. Let's see it again during the replay. It was Moise Keane and Almada with a lovely little through ball for a Liberato on this left-hand side. We're five minutes in and 2-0 up. And the ball's played and it's a slide challenge by Alexandro. And uh, he knocks it into the back of the net. This would be uh, probably the result of the season so far. Our Juventus going to get themselves back into this. Federico Chiesa cuts inside from the left. Feeds it for Ancesi. He's in behind. He doesn't have the best finish and he hits the post and Giglione clears. Come on, boys. Chiesa with a free kick for Juve to Benucci. He hasn't got the technical ability to be a playmaker on the edge of the box, so we can be thankful for that. Kulisevsky picks up the ball on this left-hand side. He tortured us, I seem to remember. Alexandro, out of Rabiot, back to Kulisevsky. Can we get the challenge in before the ball's whipped in? I don't think we are. I think this is definitely a Juventus chance, just uh, just in case you didn't know. Chiesa, he cuts in. 
gold challenge by Liberato. Are we going to break? We've got the pace with Moise Keane, but Liberato uh, brings the ball forward himself rather than putting it forward, which is fine by me. Liberato is good enough to do that. Tag Seth with the ball through is poor. And I'm not sure where this highlight's going. Oh, this is this is what's happening. Chesney's going to pump along. Gabriel Barbosa is going to chip the keeper. And Juventus are going to score 2-1. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's, there's been so many highlights in the first 20 minutes. All of them were us in the first 10. In the next 10, it's all been UV. Alexandro coming down the left-hand side. And now, decent challenge, but doesn't quite win the ball back for us. Goes back out to Alexandro on this left-hand side. It's whipped in. Kessie's there. And it's a good job. Kessie's got a triangle head. I'm going to go to balanced from positive just to see if it changes anything. We have another highlight 28 minutes in. Free kick deep in our own half. It's going to be punted long. Moise Keane's going to get the first man to it and tag Seth with a nice little 1-2 with Moise. Can he get into the box? He can. He goes for goal. Moise Keane's been the Adam Hlozek of this season, by the way. Absolutely phenomenal. 16 goals for the season. Not quite on Hlozek's level, might I add, but um, pretty close. Moise Keane. Uh, really stepping up in Adam's absence. Lovely little through ball by Tag Seth. He might end up being a little bit of a casualty of Manuel Locatelli coming in, but I'm thinking maybe Tag Seth, Alcaraz in the centre of midfield with Locatelli in defensive midfield, Melodioni being the man to drop out. But it just increases our strength and depth in that position as we almost score 4 1 up. Liberato swings the ball in, Chesney claims, and the highlight is just getting going. Big punt over the top, Barbosa wins the header, Chiesa brings it down, he goes for goal and it's poor. The first half is coming to an end, it's been absolutely fantastic from our point of view. A pretty even game going by the match stats, but we find ourselves 3-1 up. Let's kick off for the second half, no changes required. Um, let's just check on that. Our midfielders are always, our central midfielders in particular are always the one who was struggling the most come the end of the game, but Lazaro picks up the ball in the box, plays it in. Oh, Wojciech Chesney, that is absolutely dreadful. I mean, I would love to have him in my goal looking at his attributes, but um, if he'd done that for me, I wouldn't be best pleased. Moise, Moise Keynes, 17th goal of the season. Giglione with a nice pass down the right-hand side. Lazaro cuts it back nicely. And pff, shotgun. Another highlight now. Are Juve going to start mounting a comeback? It could potentially be on with Desciglio. Coming down this right-hand side, he whips it in. Barbosa gets his head on. That's his second goal of the game. He's 12th for the season. And um, he's causing us some problems, is Barbosa. Alcaraz is struggling the most out there. I think we're going to get him off. We've got uh, Patrick Berg on the bench or Thomas Belmont. I'm going to bring on Belmont. And I'm going to switch him and Tag Seth in position. Although I might end up having to take off Tag Seth as well. We'll just see how this highlight goes before we uh, make any rash decisions. Tag Seth on the ball now. Ball through for Lazaro is beautiful. Oh, he's took a wide... Why didn't he shoot first time? And it's going to be Juventus counter-attack based on that as well. Thankfully, the ball is overplayed and Giglione can clear up. Nice in a player by us down this right-hand side. Alcaraz overlapping and Moise Keane's there. Oh, what a love. I'm, I wish I could sign Moise Keane. He's worth about 37 million quid, so it's not going to happen. But that is a beautiful dink. Right, let's get in here. Let's make our changes. So Thomas Belmont is going to be our box-to-box -box midfielder. Tag Seth can come off. And we're going to bring on Patrick Berg in the centre of midfield as well. And um, yeah, 20 minutes to go, 5-2 up. Moise Keane with his hat-trick against his former club, which is you just love to see it. Uh, 15 minutes to go, we have ourselves another highlight. Arthur, it's played in. Anel Clay as it comes back out to Arthur. He's got the Alexandro overlapping on this left-hand side. If he can whip it in second time, third time. Oh, it's going to be a penalty. Oh, it's not. It is not a penalty, boys. <laughs> I don't know how Diago Almada can drive forward through the centre. I mean, Almada does eventually get a Lazaro. Can he bury it? What a save, Chesney. Now, he's certainly made up for his previous error. We do keep possession. I'm not sure if this is actually going to lead to a chance, but you never know. Belmont, Moise Keane, Liberato. Can he whip it in? He's got Lazaro back post. Demiral clears. Another highlight now. Moise Keane picks it up from Thomas Belmont. And he can drive forward. Is he going to get his fourth delict with a fantastic challenge? Kulisevsky clears. Enel is the first man to it though. And Patrick Berg with his fresh legs can turn his man. That was beautiful. Oh, almost through to Lazaro. But uh, Arthur with the last ditch sliding challenge to prevent us being through. But we are through now. Melodioni to Lazaro. Is he offside? I think he might have been. Let's uh, let VR check. But once this is called, it's pretty much disallowed. Uh, there we are. Goal disallowed. We are still only 5-2 up. Gutted. How are you, man? Just let the game die. He's not getting back into this now. Please. 
going to take off uh, Mela Joni for Kasata just to save his legs as well uh, with three central midfielders all requiring coming off. But there we are then, boys. Genoa 5, Juventus 2, Moise Keane the hero. We don't need Adam Hlozek. We've got Moise Keane, at least for this season. Uh, who have we got next to AC Milan? I'll see you there in case there might be some transfer activity in between. You know, I like these guys who've took over the club. They've just uh, says they want to extend my contract. I mean, why wouldn't you after beating you here? The Monaco boss has been getting a bit uh, peeved that we're not giving Pietro Pellegri enough game time. So he's recalled them. So we're uh, a striker down in the squad now. Our squad's looking very thin. Uh, we've got, what's five strikers? Uh, Kevin Ogadello, not really a striker either. He's more of a tatting midfielder. So we've really only got four strikers for three spots. We need that uh, Croatian. Was he Croatian? He was Croatian. We need that guy to come in like yesterday. And here we have it, boys. Probably... Our best signing, I would say, at least of this window, Manuel Locatelli, £2.6 million for an Italian international, 25 years old, in his prime, is an absolute bargain. On He's on 49k a week, which is high for our squad, but it's going to start looking like that as we move towards better and better players, and the players that we have got request higher and higher contracts. But Melagioni comes in, immediately becomes our best midfielder. If we check our team report now, uh, the, our assistant manager reckons we should play him in defensive midfield as well. I would tend to agree with that. And here is our new contract. 30 a K week. Do you fancy giving us 39 and a half? I'll tack 38. I'm not fussy. We needed another centre-back for some cover. So we're signing Stojinovic from uh, Arsenal. He's happy to be a squad player. So he's coming in. And the striker comes in. Dion Drenner Beljo. Beljo. Beljo is his name. Shall we call him Dion? Let's see what, he, see what he's like. Two star current. Three and a half star potential. That's Stojinovic, man. Belgio, two and a half star current, three and a half star potential. What I predicted. Um, he'd be a fantastic back about 20 years old as well. I'm more than happy to give him game time. So let's have a look. Oh, oh, Shipalov. He's kicking up a right fuss since we went in for him. We can't even sign him this season due to non EU rules. But um, they're wanting 54. I'll offer you a mil. <laughs> I want, I'm wanting him to hand in a transfer request. Unfortunately for us, Locatelli is suspended for today's game. Adam Hlozek remains injured. So we go with a completely unchanged side, which beat, um, what's the faces, Juventus. Well, this is a much different challenge. We've got AC Milan away from home. AC Milan uh, doing okay this season. They're currently in sixth. If we were to get a win a day, that would be absolutely huge in terms of opening the gap up uh, from us to them. That's exactly what we want. First 20 minutes of being quiet. Let's see how the rest of the first half goes. First highlight of the game comes half an hour in, and it is AC Milan on the attack. Down this left-hand side. Benesso plays it through to Tio Hernandez. He whips it in. Back post. Maldini. Not the not the real Maldini. Uh, he's, he's son, I'm assuming. Giglione gets cleared. Liberato. We've all got your yellow cards already, I've noticed. And, well, I'm not sure if the game jumped on video there. But definitely jumped for me. I thought we were 1-0 down. Enel pumps the ball forward. It gets to Moise Keane's feet as well. Can you, I mean, that was a little bit poor. Free kick for us. Tag Seth. Whips it in. Back post. Donnarumma claims it easily. Donnarumma, by the way. He is interested in signing for me. Purely because we're a Champions League club. Now, that might not be the case next season. But if it is, and AC Milan don't get Champions League. You never know. Might be a big money move. Benesa whips the ball into the right-hand side. Maldini brings it down beautifully. Daniel Maldini's first goal of the season. Of course, it's his first goal. Let's get off this. 10 minutes to go in this first half. Get ourselves back in it, boys. To be honest with you, AC Milan are all over us here. Um, I'm going to go to balance from positive just to try and get us into this game a little bit more. But as things stand, where it's unlikely we're going to be getting back into this anytime soon. Maldini again coming down this right-hand side. Kalulu overlapping him as well. We've got plenty of men back, but he feeds it through to Colombo. And Colombo, Lorenzo, gets the goal. He's second goal of the season. And we are sinking without a trace. Moise Keane's picked up a knock as well. Fantastic. I'm going to bring on our new sign in Belgio for Moise Keane. Um, I'm <laughs> Am I writing this game off in my mind? I might be. I might just be. But we'll uh, G the boys up. We're going to go attacking this second half. I'll change a couple of things in the team instructions as well. Just to make us a little bit more direct. But um, yeah, we need a much better foot, much better second 45. Oh, our new signing Svetozar Markovic picks up a knock. We're going to bring on Nicolo Armini in defence. Hopefully that is nothing to be worried about. And it's a short term injury. If we were to lose him... I would really start to fear for our uh, chances of qualifying through the Champions League, which has been drawn. And I've just realised I haven't told you who we've got. I can't even remember myself. I think it might be Benfica. We'll confirm it after this game. 
Uh, that is that is a complete missed opportunity. Kalulu brings it down the right hand side for AC Milan. He can't whip it in, and are we going to break with Thiago Almari? Feeds it through to Belgio on your debut, son. Can you make a big difference for us? He feeds it through to Almada. Alcaraz picks it up. Tag Seth. Nice little one twos. The passes are poor, but Lazaro picks it up in the box. Alcaraz should be finishing that. Come on. Maldini's been causing us all sorts of problems down this right hand side. Is Maldini a wing back or a winger? But whichever whichever it is, he's playing absolutely fantastically for ESA Milan today. We do manage to get a clear though, and Lazaro brings down Liberato's clearance. Belgio hasn't quite got the pace Moise Keane has, but he's got decent shooting. Donnarumma with a fantastic save. Only 13 minutes or so to go in this game. We're just going to rest a, rest a boy here. We'll bring on Thomas Belmont for Miller Johnny in the midfield. Um, it looks like we're going to suffer defeat in this game, boys. Away from home against AC Milan, sort of understandable. This might be an opportunity for us, though. Lazaro, can he get past his man? He can. He's shot, saved by Donnarumma, Caldara clears. We've definitely played better in the second half. Um, just not quite as clinical as we should be. We haven't got Moise Keane or Adam Hlozek on the pitch. So it's a little bit more understandable when you consider that. But if you look at the match stats, it's an even game. AC Milan slightly edging it. As we have another highlight with nine minutes to go. Belmont plays a back to Nicolo Armini and he receives a back. A little bit static in the final third, but Lazaro's offside. By a country mile is he offside. Come on, VR. We all know it was offside. I could have told you this. Gold us allowed. Kalulu on the right-hand side for ESC Milan. They're still pressing. Even though there's only a few minutes to go and they've obviously got the two-goal advantage. Liberato clears. Belgio brings it down. Feeds it through to Almada. It's two on two. Can Almada be the difference maker? Great challenge by the defence there. I mean, we're catching them on the counter pretty regularly and effectively getting into the final third. But our final ball or two is just pretty, pretty poor. Haug brings it down the left-hand side for AC Milan. He completely does giggly on here. And he trips him up in the box. Probably gets his second yellow of the game. And it is a penalty for ESC Milan. The penalty's been awarded. At the very least, he didn't pick up the second yellow card. So we still got 11 men on the pitch. But um, this is surely game over now. ESC Milan 3, Genoa 0. Game over. And there we go. Time ticking away. You've seen the two coins of Genoa beating Juventus 5-2. Then getting smashed 3-0 off at ESC Milan. But as I did say... We had two of our best attacking players out missing. And of course, we had a penalty given away. We're away from home. It's AC Milan. It's not Cremonese. And uh, we still sit in second after that result. But we have played a game more than pretty much every single team around us. And that's what I was worried about. Oh, my God. Svetozar Markovic, our new £16 million signing out for five months. He misses the rest of the season. Nicolo Armeni. You're coming in at the starting eleven, son, whether you like it or not. It might be the making of him, to be quite honest with you. Almada's not scoring goals. We knew that. I'm not signing a 27-year-old Brazilian to replace Markovic in the squad. Especially considering, unless he's got EU nationality, we can't even sign him anywhere. So why why are you recommending? He's fairly susceptible to injuries. Bugger off, scout. Well, I've got some decisions to make for the rest of the January transfer window. As you can see, £8.5 million on 135k in the wages. Our next episode... Will be against Benfica in the first knockout round. So we've got plenty of games in between these two. And um, we'll see how we get on in Europe without our best... Well, Enel's our best centre-back. But without our best centre-back partnership for the rest of this season. It's going to be tough. Can we get through it? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, boys, it's been a bit of a longer one. If you've enjoyed it, consider leaving a like. Uh, get yourself subscribed if you're enjoying the series. And until next time, take it easy.